called Sneeds Ferry this morning. I'm going to be installing a ton and a half, a mana 15 sear split system. Uh, it's going to take a little bit more than a day probably because I'm going to be redoing some items in the attic. Uh, it's about 45 miles from the house, so it's, it's a good ways away. But it should be a good job. Uh, right on the water, it's a nice view and everything like that. It's kind of a sleepy town, especially at this time of year. So I'll try to uh, get some video of uh, various pieces of it. This is the unit that's coming out. We have a carrier. As you can see that. Tech 2000 silencer system. Very nice. Compressor blanket, mufflers. All the good stuff. And there's another one back there. In fact, if you look back on my videos in 2011, I did a video called Installing a Zone System. That's it. So we're getting hooked up and ready to pump this one down. I'm about to go up an attic and disconnect the air handler while this one's pumping down. Well, good thing I have some air handler work to do because this is not what I wanted to see today. Hopefully, there's supposed to be some coastal showers and they're going to pass by, head off the coast, and hopefully we'll be done with them. But this will not be good if this holds up all day. Here was our old carrier air handler. Flex coming around the back of it. We're going to put a new box on the back of this uh, new air handler so it mixes air a little bit better before it hits the coil. That's our line set. Supply duct works underneath this shelf here. We're going to kind of pick it up so I can get a fitting on there to blow it up to the supply size of the new air handler. And we'll get this old boy out of here. Put our new variable speed one in. Our new Goodman air handler is sitting in place. We uh, went ahead and fabricated a return box with a collar in it. We had a little bit hanging the return flex over there. It's kind of bent off. Kind of hang it up so it rolls a little bit more gently. There's our supply duct. We hang this one up a little bit here. You don't want to the flex coming off and yanking right back this way. Put a nice smooth bend in it. We have a metal fitting we've insulated on the supply side, adapting it to the old duct. So everything's moving along pretty good. It's only 11 o'clock with all the rain and stuff, so we're doing all right. Here's our Ecobee Smart SI thermostat. We'll be setting this up after we get the system online, but can't wait. It should be a pretty cool thermostat to use. Alright, I got the amount set in place here. Oh, man, uh, trying to stay out of the rain. Got the Testo test on here. So we'll let it get about 10 minutes, see how we do. I'm wiring the unit up low and high voltage, and we're about to start her up here shortly after the vacuum. Alright, we're pulling the vacuum on the old Amanda down here. Got it down pretty low. About to blank it off and check it out. Definitely want to blank it off and let it sit here for a second because with any pro flush in the line, you want to make sure you've actually pulled it down to a good vacuum. Got the test ready to roll. So hopefully here in a few minutes, got a new electrical there. A newer. This is our Ecobee stat. It's on now. So you can see it's actually a pretty cool stat. All sorts of ways you can configure it. It'll give you email alerts, give you the weather forecast once I actually set it up. Not yet. System controls. See if you can see that. It's hard to see. Auxiliary heat, auto cool heat. It's hard to see it. And then you can schedule your fan to come on periodically, which is what it's doing now. If you can hear it, the fan is running, or it was. It's uh, scheduled to run 20 minutes per hour, just to circulate the air. So there's a lot of cool things. It'll email you when the system's not keeping up with the set point. Uh, it'll let you know when the heat strips have run more than they're supposed to. Uh, you can make programs online for it. It's very cool. Uh, I just haven't finished registering. I'm going to go home and register it on my uh, laptop at home. But it's a very cool thermostat. I look forward to putting in more of these. Uh, you can keep tabs on your uh, properties from anywhere in the world with internet access. So it's really cool. But we're just about to turn the machine on for good. We've been testing the heat strips. And just letting it run, the fan run, and make sure the heat strips will come on when they're supposed to. And everything's worked out so far. I was going to change the filter, but the filter is actually pretty clean already. 
So I just kept them as a kept the hood as a spare. All right, we are pulling our vacuum. We're almost done with the vacuum. It's pulled down to 230 microns. Uh, we blanked it off. It keeps coming down and coming down. I want to make sure this is a nice dry system because you know, with the retro fritz, you never know what went on in the last system. It was blown out with Pro Flush. I want to make sure all the Pro Flush is evaporated out of the line set. So we're all about ready to hook up the testos and weigh in about 20 ounces of charge. It's got about we're about 50 degrees outside today. So we're going to weigh in for the line set, which is about 50 foot long. Take away 15 foot for a system charge. The machine itself comes charged with uh, 15 foot, uh, 15 foot's worth of refrigerant. Uh, you take the remaining 35 foot and you go 0.67 ounces per foot. Roughly that's uh, 2 ounces for every 3 feet. So we have 35 feet. Let's say that's 36 feet. You're looking at 24 ounces, so I'll probably end up putting 20 in just to make sure because the system charge isn't always what it says. So sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, I've noticed over the years. Uh, you think it'd be the same, but it's, it's not always the case. Now I'm weighing in the charge. I'm going for about 20 ounces, taking it nice and slow because I don't want to, um, you don't want to slam the TXB with a whole bunch of liquid uh, when you're weighing in the charge. Got about seven ounces in there so far. Just going to slowly put it in there. Then I'll release the charge in the unit. And then we will start her up. Alright, we have our heat set on 70. So we're going to go downstairs and check out our condenser and we'll go ahead and charge it in heat mode. I know you guys might not be able to see this, but on the back of the door here, there's a heat charging chart. And what you do is you look up your values for the temperature inside, which is close to 65. Our indoor airflow rate, which is 530. That's the rate we chose on the variable speed air handler. And outside, we're close to 52. So according to that, we should be 345 and 121. Of course, we can be within 20, 20 degrees of, uh, or 20 PSI of the liquid side and 5 PSI of the suction side. So if we look at that, we're warming up inside a little bit. 